Hello everyone, and welcome to another lecture from CyberMD. Today we'll cover how to recognize normal sinus rhythm when reading EKGs, and moving forward, you should use this methodology to analyze all EKGs that are presented to you both in question stems as well as in your clinical rotations. It's important for you to have a good understanding of EKGs and be able to accurately interpret them. Before we discuss how to identify normal sinus rhythm, we should first ask ourselves what is normal sinus rhythm? Normal sinus rhythm is a regular heartbeat pattern that is produced by the sinoatrial node, which is located in the right atrium of the heart. In a normal sinus rhythm, the heart beats between 60 and 100 times per minute and has a regular pattern of electrical impulses. Let's go through identifying the key characteristics of normal sinus rhythm in a methodical way that can be used to assess all EKGs. This is an EKG with a normal sinus rhythm displayed on the slide, but for the rest of the lecture we will use an image that is easier to see. First, let's check the rate. If you haven't watched our video over rate, rhythm, and axis, or have no background understanding of those concepts, you should watch those videos before continuing on. But we'll use the 300 rule to determine the rate here. So it looks like 300, 150, 100, 75, so a little bit below 75 is going to be our rate. Next, we'll check the rhythm. For the sake of this lecture, we'll say that it is regular. However, you can look at the previous slide and see what a regular rhythm looks like, and you're free to put a piece of paper up to the slide or use your own calipers to see the regularity using those methods. However, a regular rhythm just means the beats are occurring at a regular pace. Next, we'll check the axis. Again, for the sake of this lecture, we'll say it's regular. However, a peak at both the previous slide or other EKGs will show you that if leads 1 and AVF are both positive, that the axis is between 0 and positive 90 degrees, giving us an axis that is within normal limits. Once we have checked the rate, rhythm, and axis, we should ensure that there are P waves associated with every QRS and that there are T waves after every QRS. We should ensure that the P waves have normal morphology and that the P to R interval is within normal limits. The P to R interval is the time between the P wave and the QRS complex, which represents the electrical activity in the ventricles. In normal sinus rhythm, the PR interval should be between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds. We should also make sure that the interval is regular for each QRS as some pathologies have PR intervals that are normal for some QRS complexes but lengthened for others. Next, we can take a look at the QRS complex itself. We should identify any prominent Q waves, which may indicate previous pathology such as a myocardial infarction. A significant Q wave is a Q wave that is greater than 1 by 1 in terms of the small boxes on the EKG. Then we can ensure that the morphology and the duration of the QRS is normal. The QRS complex represents the electrical activity in the ventricles as they depolarize and should be between 0.08 and 0.12 seconds in duration. That equals about 2 to 3 small boxes. We can then analyze the ST segment to make sure that there are no elevations or depressions and that it is at the baseline. After this, we can look at the T wave morphology and look for the presence of T waves, as these can be affected by pathologic states such as hyper or hypokalemia. We can also make sure that there are no T wave inversions, which may be indicative of other pathologies. Finally, we can check the QT interval to ensure that it is within normal limits, which typically ranges from 0.35 to 0.46 seconds. This is important as a long QT interval may predispose patients to deadly arrhythmias such as torsades de pointe. In conclusion, normal sinus rhythm is a regular and consistent heartbeat pattern that is produced by the SA node in the heart. By recognizing the key characteristics of normal sinus rhythm, you can accurately interpret EKGs and make a diagnosis. I hope today's lecture has given you a better understanding of normal sinus rhythm and how to identify it on an EKG. 
Additionally, I hope that you can use these steps to methodically go through EKGs to make sure that you don't miss any significant diagnoses or pathologies. Thanks for tuning in to this lecture, and please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our content so that we can continue to provide free medical education resources to students around the world.